Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Friday, hope you're gonna have an awesome weekend. It's time for SMG Viewers Comments episode 166. Let's get right to it. Hey dude, love your content. Do you have any advice for a dude wanting to start up a studio focusing on metal? I know most bands are broke and can't really pay much, so I'm guessing you would have to work on other stuff as well. But other than getting a good amp, some good drums, and the required gear, what else would you do? <laughs> Get a day job because it's certainly not going to pay the bills. Uh, recording has become dirt cheap, so convincing bands uh, to pay you to do it is uh, something of an art form unto itself because most guys think they can do it themselves until they realize there's an awful lot of work involved. Um, so other than having an awesome day job, which will allow you to fund your studio, which is exactly what I did with this place, used uh, my day job to build up a, a, a studio business over the years. It took me two decades. Um, so have a lot of time on your hands. And um, one skill I think you should pick up is soldering because that is something you're gonna need. You're gonna need to be able to fix cables and um, make splices and all kinds of crazy stuff as um, as your sessions come in because you just don't know what's going to crop up and having a soldering iron on hand and knowing how to use it will definitely save your ass. Hey, Captain Kayla, what would be the best bang for the buck? A Katana 100 or a Joyo Zombie with a Harley Button 2x12 V30 cap? I truly can't for the love of my life decide and soon I'll have a guitar without anything to play through. Much love from Sweden and as always, fuck you, Glenn. Hey, Kim, that's a fantastic question. Honestly, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. I've demoed the Boss Katana 100 and it sounded great. Mind you, that was through my co coffee custom cab, which wasn't cheap. And uh, the little bastard Joyo Zombie uh, is going to sound great through a Harley Benton uh, 2x12. So maybe go through that. Um, do you need a lot of effects or do you just want one really great sound? Because if you want one really great sound, go with this. If you need a lot of effects, go with a katana. Whatever you do, don't go through the code back there. Hey Glenn, what's the best low quality mix that you've ever heard so far? Probably the Sex Pistols album. Uh, that's a great example of uh, maybe a band that couldn't play so well and um, still doing it awesome. You know, I still throw on pretty vacant to this day, you know, some what, 40 years after it came out. And you know, the, the, the emotion is there, the rage is there. And that's what's great about that record is there's um, there's attitude, loads of it. There's this whole fuck you attitude to the whole establishment. And I think that's simply magnificent and it still rings true to this day, and it's something you just don't get on modern over sanitized records. So even though their production wasn't great, you know what, that, that record still makes my hair stand on end because it was awesome. Hey everybody, just want to give you guys an update on my spend a buck, give a fuck campaign in case you haven't noticed. The profanity is back on this show and that is thanks to you motherfuckers. Thank you so much. Uh, I'd just like to give a huge shout out to everybody who makes SMG viewers comments possible and uh, censorship free at that. And that is my amazing patrons. They also made the Marshall Code review possible and they're going to make more upcoming Fearless Gear Review is possible where I can give you guys the absolute truth about what a piece of gear really is without any interference from any manufacturers or outside companies or advertising agencies or any of that bullshit because you guys deserve the truth. If you want to see more of it, head on over to my Patreon, check out my spend a buck, give a fuck campaign, and you guys can get some cool fucking rewards as well. Thanks so much, motherfuckers. Muscle memory, man. Can't make a drummer move the hi-hat over a couple of inches. Why do I don't I rearrange the order of your guitar strings and ask you to play? Because we're not asking for very much. Every professional session musician I've asked about their drum setup, either A, has their hi-hat in a logical location where it's not going to cause problems, or B, doesn't whine like a little bitch when he gets asked to move his hi-hat just a minuscule amount. I know that seems like a huge distance because of what you're stuck masturbating with, but trust me, for the rest of us men out there, it's not a big deal. As for changing the instrument's tonal voice, consider this. If the guitars are constantly chugging out minor third riffs down on some flubby low B root or for 12 tunes in a row, you may want to think about doing something different with the tone so that the listener doesn't end up with tired ears. At some point, everything will turn into white noise if you hear it long enough. That is a fantastic observation. Thank you so much. You know, there's a reason why I love records like uh, Megadeth's Peace Sills, because it's only like 40 to 42 minutes long, and that's it. 
And I've always been under the philosophy of all the, always leave them wanting more. You know, you, you put on a, like a Pantera record, you know, they, the, that's a really long record. Like Cowboys from Hell, um, I can only listen to it in chunks because it just goes on and on and on. And a little bit of variety goes an exceptionally long way. And just because there's 72 minutes on a CD doesn't mean you should fill that up. I always thought that, you know, 40 minutes to 50 minutes was a perfect length for a record. And again, always leave them wanting more. And you do that by mixing up the songs because music needs peaks and valleys. Otherwise, it just becomes all boring all the time, like everything we're hearing nowadays, especially with the overmastering phenomenon. Yay, modern music is so awesome. Give me more. Hey Glenn, what happened to Mixbus? Did you stop using it? I thought you liked it a lot because of the easy way of mixing, but you kept with Reaper. I was thinking on getting Mixbus, but I wanted to know your opinion of it, how you used it. But it seems you only used it for review videos in 2017. Cheers from Columbia. I really love Mixbus for mixing. It's just, I need to track and produce three episodes a week. And Mixbus is a wonderful mixing platform. It leaves a little to be desired as an editing platform. And as a tracking platform, really leaves something to be desired. It still hasn't quite got the real-time monitoring issue figured out. And that's something I work with in Reaper all the time and I have to have it. Uh, that being said, I'm learning Studio One and I'm starting to learn some of the editing tools and whatnot. And that's a pretty interesting way to mix as well. It mixes very similar to the way a mix bus does where you can set up different buses and whatnot. And it's got a built-in console emulation. So yeah, that's that's a pretty interesting halfway point. Some of the editing tools are a little weird, so I'm, I'm having some fun getting used to them, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I haven't tracked anything on, on um, Studio One yet, but I am looking forward to it. Stay tuned. Hi, Glenn. Loved your video on the ARC compressor so much, I bought one off the strength of your video. Do you think external outboard EQ can be as uplifting for mixes, or are there enough good in-the-box EQs to make it not needed? Greetings from the UK. Uh, I think there's some truly great in-the-box EQs. I know Waves make some really amazing stuff. I've been very happy with their uh, 1073 clone, the Shep 73. I'm, I'm using that quite a bit. If you checked out my drum template video, um, you'll see I use that all over the place and that's really great. Um, never really had a problem with digital EQ. I mean, like I do have an IGS Pultec uh, mastering EQ back there. That's pretty awesome as well. And it's definitely got that sound that you hear so often. So um, yeah, if you're gonna get a hardware EQ, I don't know, get one of those. They're pretty damn wicked. That reminds me, I've got a free download for you guys. If you didn't check out my templates video, please do. I'll put a link to that in the description below and I kind of take you through uh, my whole tracking template, uh, where, what my effects are set to and how I how I wrote and bust things in Reaper. It's really cool. And uh, you can download the templates. It gets you all my settings and all that kind of crap. And um, if you're not doing drum tracking, you want to record some vocals, I've also got a heavy vocal cheat sheet available. It's yours absolutely free. Again, follow the link in the description below. Hey Glenn, I've heard some studios recording the whole band all at once, or some do it separately. What are the pros and cons of both? I'm going to attend some courses on music production, but this question has always interested me, and I haven't heard an honest opinion. Also, greetings from Latvia. Hey man, fantastic question. You know, back in the 60s and 70s, band used to record all the time, and there's definitely something to be said for a band playing live off the floor. Something I wish we could do more of. It's just got an interesting vibe, and things tend to come alive. I go back to that Sex Pistols record. Um, a lot, a lot of the cool stuff in the seventies was live off the floor. And Warren and Warren Hewitt and I, um, Warren from Produce Like a Pro, we've talked at length about this. And there's definitely something to be said for getting a band um, out from the control room and onto the studio floor and just having them kick ass live. You can definitely get a vibe there. I've done some Celtic records like that, and those just make my hair stand on end. A couple tracks we did with a band called Regale. Uh, we're live off the floor, and they they were just wicked. I got to do a, a record called uh, Face Down. I think it was uh, Forgetting the Constant Fear was the name of that record. And uh, that was mostly live off the floor. I think we tracked the vocals after the fact, but it was just two guitar players and the drummers just ripping tracks out for a day. And yeah, we got a massively awesome vibe on that. So um, I've tried it with a couple other bands. Sometimes it works, sometimes it, it doesn't. It really tends to separate the men from the boys though. Definitely worth trying out though, if you have the opportunity because boy, is it fun and is it ever a great alternative to the sanitized bullshit we get served up these days. Why the fuck are Henning's gear videos so long? Because he's compensating for something. I've been battling with depression for a while now, but watching videos like these actually bring a smile to my face. Thank you, Glenn. Oh, thank you, Vasco. Thanks so much. I really love uh, hearing things like that. Sorry you're dealing with depression. And you know, if I can bring a little happiness to a few people in the world, you know what? That means I'm doing my job. So uh, thank you for that. And um, dude, I hope you're feeling better soon. Just remember, tomorrow's another day. Don't give up.
Glenn, I'm currently producing a band and they're very talented and awesome dudes, but the guitar player insists on changing strings to a different brand because he can't find the strings we started recording with at Guitar Center. I said this is a bad idea and I don't think it's going to change their mind. Please help. Uh, good luck with that. I find when a musician has their mind made up, uh, you know, using things like Logic pretty much doesn't help ever. Um, I don't know. Just roll with it and make sure you charge by the hour. Hope it goes well. Glenn, what would you do if a company sent you a garbage amp and told you to be 100% honest? It depends on the manufacturer. I mean, like, I've had a few things come in here from smaller manufacturers that I thought if I did an honest review on it, it would probably hurt their company. And um, I'm not into hurting small businesses. So um, I've, I've said to those in, in those cases, it's like, yeah, we better not do a video here because this could hurt your sales. This could uh, this could really damage your business. And um, I don't want to be responsible for putting somebody out of a job. And what I'll do is I'll give them honest feedback. And I'll be like, OK, this needs to be fixed. This needs to be improved. This needs to be improved. And uh, generally, those guys are incredibly appreciative of that sort of thing. I've only had it happen a couple of times. I'm not going to name them. No, it's not your business. Uh, but I do want to see people succeed in their ventures, especially when it comes to building music gear. So honest feedback is a very important part of that. Uh, that being said, if it's a bigger company, I think they're offering up a crap product. I'm definitely going to call them out on that shit because they can afford to take a hit, not mentioning any names. So that's that. You're going to have to start enlisting the help of not so great players to sell the idea that these bits of gear are anything less than serviceable. The musicians you work with are distractingly talented and they make even the shittiest of gear sound fine to my ears, speaks volumes about their abilities. Well, thanks very much, Jeff. I'm sure um, all the guys I've had contribute on the show, including Cam Fleury, Justin Estacado, Mike Wisnock, TJ Dowhannock, Brandon Wright, and uh, Chris Rafinski, uh, and of course, Christian Bay as well. Um, really appreciate those comments. Those guys are just awesome musicians, and it's a real privilege to get to work with them and, and put the show on for you guys. And they really do appreciate comments like that, especially because most of the comments they get are, oh, you guys suck, you guys suck, I could have been better. And uh, yeah, we get that all the time. So thanks for the vote of confidence. We really appreciate it. Keep watching the show. Much more to come. You know, honestly, when I started as a bass player, I would most likely fit into the cheap bastard, non-string-changing, meat-headed bullshit kind of dickhead that a lot of sound engineers have to deal with these days. However, watching this channel a year into my bass playing pushed me out of that. Maintain your instrument, change your damn strings, practice your shit. If I can fucking change my opinion and change the way I approach bass from this guy without being a crying fucking prick over it, why can't you? I'm not even a metal musician yet. Glenn Fricker fucking saved me from going down a path that will really not have been good for anyone. Well, one of my heroes, George Carlin, said it this way. Everybody loves it when you're honest until you're honest about them, then you're an asshole. But dude, seriously, that's that's awesome to hear. Glad to hear you're stepping up and starting to take your role as a bass player. More seriously, the world needs m people who are serious about the, the instrument and are going to progress at the instrument and give the best performance they possibly can. The world needs great bass players. Keep at it, dude. Be one of them. Forgive me if this is on another video comment thread. How many bass players does it take to change a light bulb? Well, the bass players will just argue that the light bulb doesn't need to be changed and then be confused as to why it's dark. That was awesome. Sorry I didn't get your name, dude, but that was a great fucking comment. Kudos to you. Anyway, uh, just want to say, everybody, have a magnificent weekend. And if you like the show, you like what I do, and you like seeing me... Uh, call it bad gear and you like the profanity and all that stuff please head on over to my patreon and support my spend a buck give a fuck campaign and uh, help keep this show fun and uncensored and not influenced by the manufacturers and for those of you guys who want to learn something don't forget to check out my free downloads for the recording templates and the heavy vocal cheat sheet anyway you guys have a magnificent weekend i am out of here i'll see you next time